Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So the last place we left off, yeah, me and Rannick, me and Rannick, Rannick and Orion had gotten into a bit of a fight. Um, a little bit of Rannick's, uh, religious intolerance is peaking, <laughs> it's showing itself. You know, some of that stuff that's been drilled into him from a young age. Stuff and indoctrination stuff that's very, very, very hard to wear off. I would know. Uh, I, grew, I grew up with it. But anyway, guys, Verissa helped us out. It kind of lightened the mood. But let's jump right back into it and see just where today takes us, shall we? All right. Let's see. Uh, alarm chain, you're up. Let's go. <clears throat> All right. And enjoy. Hmm. She mumbles, looking back at me with a risen brow while struggling to pull up the dress. Commission as in Kemet. I assume it's far away. You assume well. She nods through a smile, placing the needles into the fabric to secure the new baseline. It's on the other side of the globe, so this here, my friend, is a royal gift. <sniffs> Excuse me, guys. She stands up, admiring her handiwork. Not too shabby. She nods in satisfaction and pulls out of her bag a glistening golden belt. Here, put it on. I reluctantly pick it up from her paws. It looks awfully expensive, with each segment connected to the other on a tiny hinge and a large blue gemstone set in a buckle. I drag it across my waist, pulling the dress closer to my figure. Once I click, a, once a click announces the belt is secure, I brush my hands across the fabric to straighten it out. My, my, now you look the part. You mean the part of a noble, right? I mumble awkwardly, causing the wolves to laugh. Okay, give us a turn. She claps her hands in excitement, almost like what your best girlfriend would do seeing you in her borrowed dress. How does it feel? Oddly enough, it fits me perfectly. I smile. The garb is quite comfortable and airy, not to mention the silk caresses my skin in an extremely sensual way. You got a figure for it, isn't that right, Rannick? Ugh, don't be ridiculous. Mm-hmm, ridiculous am I? She draws my attention to the wolf's idle tail flicks, and I cannot contain a laugh. Just give it a rest. How much do I owe you? It was a gift, so I pass it forward. The female shrugs dismissively. I try to get down from the chair, assuming my posing is now done, but Rennick approaches me to lend me to lend me his paw. A gift? From whom? He asks, his attention fixed on the pushy wolf, meaning she meaning he doesn't notice my blush at his gentlemanly gesture. Vool. She exhales heavily, now drawing my attention as well. He wasted all his money on it during his first visit to Strandbard. We were sixteen, I think. It was meant as part of his courtship. Oh, that's kind of sweet. Hmm. She winces uncomfortably, not really sharing my sentiment. Vool? Shit, he's not going to like this. In that case, he can wear it himself, because I sure as the Moonrise won't. Why ever not? Do I look like a female that prances around in silk dresses? She asks mockingly, and I wince through a smile. N no Either way, I only kept it out of respect for his hard work. It's nice to see something good coming out of it. She ruffles my hair as a loud knocking resonates through the door. And speak of the devil. Damn my luck, it seems a perfect time for my egress was a few moments ago. I don't suppose we could pretend we're not in. We were supposed to eat together. Rennick frowns. That was before I decided to get rid of this dress. You think it's going to be that bad? It's going to be a shit show. I'd hope we would present Orion in that dress out in the open where Vool couldn't make a scene. A fate, a fate to comply. I nod, trying to ease the tension. Yes. She stutters, looking at me in confusion. Whatever that means. Another, this time more impatient, knock, knock shakes the door. Rannick, I know you're in there. Versa extends her paw towards the gray wolf, halting him from answering. I watch as she walks past me, headed to the bedroom. Orion, be a darling and grab me some moonshine. Oh, I need more than ale to get through this spectacle. I nod and rush to the cupboard while Rannick looks to her expectantly by the door. When she has the bottle in her paw, she reaches deeper into the adjacent room, moving completely out of sight. That's when Rannick finally lets Vool in, while I situate myself beside the hearth. The black wolf marches in impatiently, bearing a linen parcel in his paws. Finally! What took you so long? Right. I have what you asked for. There's some jerky, smoked sausage, and cheese. <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh, I love that look. That's perfect. Perfect comedic relief. He pauses, placing the bundle down while his blood-red irises center on me. I can see them immediately shrink as he narrows his brows in anger. What are you doing in that? Take it off! His growl thunders across the kitchen and I wince. Verissa gave it... I stumble back as he rushes towards me with paws extended in frightening fashion, fingers feathered out with claws ready to sink into my flesh. Take it off! Now! I slump into the wall, running out of the room to retreat into. The wolf slams his paws on either, on either of my sides, causing the cottage to shake as a fee effectively corners me. His snarling muzzle lowers to my face and I begin to shiver, noticing his, very, his every muscle tensed up in anticipation. Y yes! I nod my voice slightly cracking as my, prey, as my prey mentality kicks in at the sight of his jagged fangs so close to my throat. I can see his, see his nostrils expand with each agitated huff of air and I close my eyes, almost as if wishing him away. Vool! Rannick finally steps in, trying to push him away as I struggle to get the dress off. When I grab the rim, I accidentally prick myself on one of the needles and jump up. Ah! I said, take it off or so help me! He interrupts, hearing he interrupts, hearing Rannick's own growls as, as his threat. This redirects Vool's attention to the other wolf as he throws him an angered gaze. I'm taking it back to her! He's not taking it off, and I'm not taking it back! The bedroom door opens and Verissa walks in with a clear annoyance on her muzzle. She bangs a clay bottle on the table and squares off with a black male, almost looking ready for a fight. At first, Vul stumbles slightly, shocked that she's actually present, only to huff an annoyance and regard me with the same anger as before. I said, take it off! Her finger points to me commandingly. Don't you dare! I swallow and simply stay still. I spend my days in the den of vigil, tending to the sick and wounded. I cauterize cuts and mend open fractures, most of the time drenched in someone's blood. I don't have a need for a silk dress. She stands defiantly, looking at the male with disdain I haven't yet seen from her. I don't care what you do, you can make it a floor rag if you wish, but that's but that thing is not wearing... <laughs> Enough! The female growls, slamming her fist into the table, causing the tankards and bottles to dance. Although very much feral, her growl is still surprisingly melodic. For crying out loud, we are not your betas to be ordered around, fool. So, hold your tongue. My eyes open. My eyes are wide open as I've I, as I've never heard her snarl so viciously before. Ah! You've both lost your fucking minds. Treating that thing like it's a person, downright perverse. You yourself treated him with respect at the feast. Renick tightens his fist, slowly losing his own patience. Wolf finally pulls away from me, throwing his massive paws around in annoyance. That's because someone was causing that little bitch to weep for Mommy's tit. Since neither of you were going to keep him pacified, I had to step in to avoid us all getting banished. Are you quite finished, or should I come back later once your temper tantrum is worn off? She finally subdues her growl, looking at him with clearly waning patience. I never wore it, nor I would ever. It's a good thing it has some to use, some use you now. You're even giving away the belt? It's a sapphire set in pure gold. He spits out. He has to tie it up his he has to tie up his waist somehow. A piece of rope would suffice. Fool, don't be ridiculous. That's pure silk. Yes, your silk. I'll pay you back for this. Renick tries to place a pawn on his friend's shoulder, but Vool brushes it off. You're insane. This is worth a royal ransom. Doesn't matter. You would squander such fortune on a fucking pig in a dress? Now it's Rannick who snarls, struggling to not bare his fangs at his friend. I'd gladly pay any money to make a friend happy and comfortable, wouldn't you? That question causes Vool to pause, his wild red eyes darting between each of us. That thing's a friend now? Yes, he is. Another subdued growl resonated deep in Rannick's chest, and his clear he's slowly losing patience. Vool huffs like a locomotive, making my heart race, as I'm convinced they're going to fight once again. But eventually, he simply sighs through a soft growl. Ugh! I don't want your fucking money. It was a gift for her. He waves his paw between me and Verissa. If she wants to throw it away on a moon-damned pig... Vool, that is enough! You're hurting him! I haven't touched that little wimp. He snarls at her reprimand, seemingly set off once again. You're the one cradling it like... You're the one cradling it with Rannick like a pair of den mothers. 
Although I expected another spat to erupt, she simply looks at him dumbfounded, only to sigh in resignation and shakes her head. Unbelievable. She mutters, approaching the doors. Why do I think you can ever change? You're a damned animal, fool, to lash out at him like that. I haven't laid a single claw on him. Sometimes words cut just as deep, if not deeper. Wait, where are you going? Anywhere, where I don't have to look at his snarling muzzle. She opens the door, while Rannick points to the half-undone dress. But the... Don't worry, I'll come back to finish it later, once he's not around. She nods towards the black male. <clears throat> Sorry, got some saliva caught in my throat. What about the breakfast? Enjoy, I've lost my appetite. As she closes the doors behind her, an awkward silence falls over the room. I just stand there, huddled to my corner, really afraid to move, while Rannick gives Vool a hurtful and patronizing gaze. What? What did I do? Good job, brother. As always, you know how to push everyone away. I try not to look directly at the Black Wolf, but I notice Rannick walk past him towards the doors. He opens them and looks sternly at his friend. You're kicking me out. I want to eat our meal in peace, and I need to think. You kind of fucked up my little plan. kind of fucked my plan a little. Rannick huffs in annoyance. Your plan? I was going to ask Varissa to take care of Orion while I'm away. Vul's red iris is drilling to me and I divert my gaze. I feel like a kid who just witnessed a massive fight between his parents. I don't really know what to do. Let me take care of it. What? Rennick scoffs, resounding my own surprise and closing the doors. I can look after the piglet. After the stunt you just pulled, you must be joking. I didn't hurt him, nor would I. I'd rather much have Varissa do it. Yeah, so would I, actually. And just like that, I remembered her earlier offer. Varissa said I could move in with her. I mutter, my voice still faint and low. It's not that simple. The Grey Wolf frowns. I'm glad she offered to accommodate you, but I'm sure she meant it as a last resort. Why? You can't just move in with someone else. You are my ward. Rennick looks at me apologetically. Only way to change accommodation would be if he dismissed you, or if his father would transfer you to another wolf. Former would leave a blemish on you. The latter would leave a blemish on me. Neither an optimal outcome in our current situation. A blemish? A dismissed ward's ward is proven inadequate, with very much with very much affects their standing. A dismissed ward is proven inadequate, which very much affects their standing. While a wolf that had their ward taken away from them is proven incapable and irresponsible. Another reason why Trist is so pissed, then. He was dismissed without a valid reason and now has to live with the consequences, whatever they are. You'll have to deal with some time alone, kid. He still needs someone around, Rennick insists, to which Vool just shrugs. I look in on him from time to time. He needs more than looking in on Vool. Orion is in a fragile state. Ha! Huh, as opposed to what, his sturdy one? The Black Wolf scoffs mockingly. See, this is exactly why I know it's a bad idea. Oh, for fuck's sake, Rannick, since that human showed up, you can't even handle a damn tease. Because this isn't a joke. He states sternly, his eyes betraying he's no longer entertaining his friend's provocations. Orion is not to be dicked around. He suffered immense trauma, goes through moon knows what levels of stress while being cooked to, being cooped up in here on top of the amnesia he has to contend with. Being left alone with his thoughts is the last thing he needs. What's required here is a companion, not a bully. The Grey Wolf huffs in annoyance. Fool just stands there, thinking for a moment while his gaze darts between me and Rannick. Eventually, he sighs heavily. Ugh! Very well. I'll take him under my wing. He won't be left alone for a moment. What? Rannick, Rannick seems completely shocked by the suggestion. I'm trying to figure out what it actually means. You would really do that? Yes, really. He responds mockingly. I want to prove to Varissa that I'm not a dumb brute. So that's what it's about. The wolf looks to Vol with disappointment. I knew it. You don't give two shits about... Exactly. I don't. Vol interrupts him through a soft growl. The human is your obsession, not mine. All I care about is you and her, so you can trust me when I say I won't fuck it up. Sorry if I find it hard to believe at the moment. You nearly tackled him over a damn dress. I gave it to her! This time his growl is not as subtle. 
I can see Vol's fur bristle and barely contained anger. All those years, she never wore it, not once. Seeing her throwing it away, as, throwing it away was almost as if she spat in my muzzle. How would you feel if Cora treated you like this? I, I. The wolf seems to be caught off guard by the question, as if it came out of nowhere. Who's Cora anyway? I'm so confused, especially seeing Rannick completely stumped. You wouldn't know, would you? Because you always get what you want. Every female and defective male this side of Turnin wants a piece of the Dream Wolf. Vol scoffs mockingly, looking at Rannick's growing discomfort. Um, hmm. See? Considering the circumstances, I think I kept my composure well enough. Besides, I made a promise. He reiterates, tugging at his moonstone. Or does that really mean fuck all to you and you think I would am or does that really mean fuck all to you and you think I would maul him just because I got slightly annoyed? Of course not. But I really believe Varissa is better suited for this. Varissa has enough shit to deal with without you smearing yours all over her. Vul huffs dismissively, walking towards the table and taking a seat. She needs to keep her distance from this whole mess, especially now with the elders agitated as it is. I don't like this. Rannick mutters and also pulls up a chair, bidding me to do the same. I guess the emotions simmer down to the point where I don't need to act like a deer standing or staring into the headlights. Getting some work done will be good for him. Vul nods towards me as I take my seat. I'll learn a skill and start clipping away and chipping away at his... No. The Grey Wolf cuts off, giving him a knowing gaze. Not now. I blink, not keen on being left out. Chipping away at my what? It doesn't matter. Rennick tries to dismiss me, causing Vool to raise his brow. He's talking out of his ass. I'm talking out of my... Vool sneers, narrowing his eyes. You didn't even tell him, did you? Wow, and I'm the asshole. Vool? The Grey Wolf sounds almost pleading, but the black male seems to have none of it. What are you doing, you idiot? He's not a toy, nor your pet to kill time with. Tell him the fucking truth as he deserves to hear it. What truth? I finally pitch in, staring at them with growing annoyance. Vul just gives a look to Rannick, who winces uncomfortably. As the silence protracts, I just gawk at him until he sighs. Ugh! I wanted to wait for a better moment. A better moment? He means he hoped he could weasel out of the deal. The Black Wolf explains mockingly, seeing Rannick's hesitation. Well, it ain't going to happen. Not the elders, not even his father would ever forgo your obligations. That's just not how things work. He gives Rannick a patronizing gaze. My obligations? Again, the wolf sighs heavily, clearly uncomfortable with the conversation. Any other kin who stays with us incurs a debt. I thought you don't allow other kin into the forest. We don't. Vul nods. But there are those who are born in Tiernan. The Sylvan folk. I conclude. The Sylvan folk. I conclude. Yes. We allow them to live in our territory, and in turn, they have to provide tribute. He explains casually, looking over a mug of ale. A tribute? Coin, raw materials, but usually it's foodstuffs. As you can see, we don't grow much here. At first I try to think of it as taxes, but the more I think about it, the more I realize it's much, much worse than that. I feel slightly uncomfortable at the idea of those wolves living off what pretty much amounts to an extortion. When the Sylvan folk cannot pay their tribute, they have to provide us with wards as a sort of retainer. Hostages. I state bluntly. This conversation has taken quite a turn. Your word, not mine. I don't even know how to respond to that. You're both being overdramatic. Vul scoffs at us. They simply have to repay the debt their people incurred by not fulfilling the tributary obligations. You mean all those bunnies here are indentured servants? Well, it's a bit of a crude way of putting it. What other way would you put it? I snap, causing Rannick to wince. It's better than it sounds. How is it better? At least one step above slavery better, I suppose. The Black Wolf rolls his eyes, drowning his mug of ale, downing his mug of ale. So what, you own me? More like you owe the tribe for saving your life. I'm just here to make sure you work it off. 
I didn't ask for any of this. You still live with us. You're being sheltered and fed. Oh, my God! I slapped my forehead in annoyance. How did I not see this coming? In your defense, Rannick is a professional muddler. He loves dancing around the truth. Not helpful. Rannick throws him a stern gaze. Vul seems to be enjoying this little spat, but I'm not in a mood for teasing. I think it is. I mean, you did tell him you want to take him back home. How are you going to do that if he won't start pulling his share? I listen carefully, watching their respective expressions. What do you mean? I ask, even though I fear I know the answer. His memory hasn't even come back yet. The Grey Wolf protests. Even if it would be this very moment, he won't be allowed to leave, not until he pays off his due. Oh boy. Oof. Oh man, that is bad. Oh. Orion's got to repay all the time he spent with the tribe. Oh god, that's not good. That's going to be a while. Oh, uh, at least he can get to know everyone better. Hmm. Man. Man, kind of a in very intense episode. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!